Hi, everybody. Good morning and welcome to From White Collar to Blue Collar, the podcast about making the change from a stable office job to a blue collar job. And this podcast, as I've mentioned, is geared for people with no experience in blue collar work and who are probably pretty scared about it. So I wanted to in this podcast talk about trying to make the transition to blue collar work while still keeping the office job and basically learning the trade on the side or building it up on the side, the trade, the craft, whatever. So I think I have some useful input on this because this is something that I tried to do for a few years. So I understand you have this office job, maybe like me, you went to college and always the expectation that you grew up with from teachers and family and friends from the greater society is that you would go on to some kind of professional career, which generally means a white collar job. Doctor, lawyer, engineer, accountant, something like that. And you have this job now. Maybe you've been in it a couple years. Maybe you've been in it for decades. And you've, you, you have the itch to do something else. You look at Blue collar work is as something aspirational for you for whatever reason, right? I don't know the reasons, but it's there for some reason. That's why you're listening to this. And I'm sure a lot of you feel some kind of weight on you about just leaving this this profession that you've been that you thought maybe you thought you wanted to do for a long time or that people expected you to do for a long time. And let's face it, blue collar work in a lot of ways doesn't have the same prestige. It's just not seen in American society as something to aspire to when you have the opportunity to to do something else. So there's a temptation at least that I felt, and I'm sure some of you do, well, I'm going to, I want to make the change. I want to make the transition, but I'll do it on the side. I'm going to keep the job. And on the weekends at nights, I'm going to build furniture in my garage like I was doing, or I'm, I'm going to take these side gigs and, and, I get it. I get I get the temptation to do that. I got to say for me that wasn't overall it was useful for a short period of time to get some kind of taste of what the work was, but if it goes on a, more than a year or two and it's not successful and it, you're not really learning the trade you're not really making any money i'd say that's the point where it's like either you're going in you're you're taking the plunge or you're you're not you know you're moving on so here's a little bit of 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 that time of my life where I was trying to do that. Okay, so I, for example, got some jobs painting, painting gigs. And it was useful in the sense that, okay, I'm not just painting the my childhood bedroom where I have unlimited time to do it. I can always pick it up and go. 
and I can mess up the walls, I can paint wrong and, you know, do it over like five times. Okay, I had a couple of gigs where, you know, I was actually hired to paint somebody else's room. And this put me in the mindset of, okay, I'm being, ex there's an expect expectation of, uh, of professional work. I'm being held to that standard and I am in a time limit. I'm in somebody else's place. I got to think about the hours. It's not just something I can do at 10 o'clock at night because I feel like it or it's the most convenient for me. So it was useful in that sense. Same with some furniture projects I did where people hired me. I mean, it's just there's certain expectations that go with it. Somebody's giving you any amount of money for some kind of service. Now they're expecting some kind it to be done in a timely manner and in some kind of professional fashion. So it's going to kind of give you a, a or for me, it gave me a taste of more of what's expected of me and, and, and to get myself in, in, in a manner where there's an expectation of efficiency too on my part to make money and on the part of the customer, okay? Because they don't want to wait forever for something they're hiring you to do. And you also cannot just take forever to do it and to correct your mistakes and to get it to look professional because you're just investing time and energy into something and you now you have to see if it makes money and that was kind of the problem because once you get past the point where okay uh, I get an idea of what painting professional painting is like I'm getting an idea of professional furniture making and what I started to see was that if, over time once I got past the first initial few projects I was seeing that it I, I wasn't really learning enough I wasn't making enough money like even if I went to classes after work they I wasn't learning enough and the amount of money I w and time I was putting into buying materials and to kind of learning how to do an estimate and kind of having the right tools and kind of knowing how to pick out lumber, it just wasn't enough. I was just constantly f getting frustrated that I was doing it I was I was making furniture I was painting rooms but certainly not enough to to really find my way in in a sense that was satisfactory to me in other words I wasn't reaching the goal doing it part time right I mean so with painting of you know an old buddy of mine says hey I need somebody to paint my childhood bedroom. I don't have the time for it. Okay, I can, I, like, this friend of mine was from college. He didn't exactly live near me, and I'm going out driving a pretty far distance to paint one room, okay? Because, let's face it, you know, he knew I wasn't a professional painter. We were both economics majors in college, and you know, he wanted to help me out and he was willing to possibly put up with less than professional results, but he also knew he wasn't going to pay me as much as a professional painter. And I understood that because I wasn't a professional painter. So I'm driving out, you know, an hour or so each way, you know, to, to, prime he had blue you know it was his childhood room it was like painted blue for you know probably since he was a baby or a child right so I had to prime it I had to fill in the like you know the imperfections in the wall 
I mean, I'm going out there like a couple weekends and 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 doing this, and um, it's it it's just not working out. Like he's to start out. I'm not being paid enough. It's just one room. Like the the. The, the the juice isn't worth the squeeze. And that's that's what I was finding overall. Um, you know, there's these classes and things like that. So I want to talk about going to like these classes for, for my trade. Now, I understand that there are like these professional schools and maybe they're a lot better, right? Like you want to be an auto body tech, your electrical work, welding, like, you know, they're professional schools, but maybe that's better because like they're, you know, they're really for people like set and, and, and are serious. I assume, you know, like, so here's, here's my experience. Like there was, there was a, a, place near where I lived and they held classes for woodworking and finishing that were taught by professionals. So let's say one of the first ones that I took was like intro to woodworking. Okay. And they had, you know, other classes on using a router and wood carving and things like that. So my My main issue with these classes is that, you know, I'm in a wood shop and I'm in a class with like five or six other people. So they're going to show you, for example, the table saw or the router. And then, you you, you know, you're going to I listen to the teacher and I listen to what they said. And then that would be your turn at the table saw. And I would wait for the first guy to have his turn at the table saw with the instructor watching. And he'd probably do something wrong or hesitate. And the teacher would work with him. And, you know, you try, I'm trying to concentrate. I mean, it's after work. I'm a little tired. Worked a whole day full time. And I start to kind of zone out or I'm watching, but I'm not watching. I start looking at other things in the wood shop. Okay, and then it's my turn, and the instructor, he'll have a few minutes where he can show me the right way to use the table saw, and a way that I'm not going to cut my finger off or something like that. But, you know, the guy in back of me, he's then sitting there waiting for 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes for everything to get lined up and for me to make the cut, and he probably has a full-time job or something like that. So... Yeah, I, I I knew more about operating a table saw coming out of that class than I did before and knew more about finishing and got some info and some direction. But was I set to really work in a wood shop after taking all these classes? No, I didn't I didn't feel that way. And like I said, I'm sure there's some better programs and more serious classes and maybe look into those, like sort them out, like really sit in on a class. Like, am am I really going to learn how to be a welder after this class? Or is it going to be something like my experience? Because yeah, I paid for them. I was paying like quite a bit of money for, for these classes. And then for the ability to, to use the wood shop in my free time. And I mean, what's my free time at that point? It's a weekend. I have chores to do. I have responsibilities. I got to wash my clothes and I, I had a social life and, you know, go meet my parents and holidays and stuff like that. I mean, there's still like life going on on the weekends, right? Everybody is going to have things that they still have to do outside of of work and and these side gigs. So it's it was constantly feeling like pressed for time and just not not getting enough enough like leeway to to sort things out, to really figure out okay, like, how, how am I going to make money from this project? And, 
you know, you, in the beginning, it's just you're just happy to take on a project. Wow, somebody hired me to do this or that. But it's over time, it's going to wear on you. You know, you're sitting there on a 11 o'clock on a Saturday night. And after, you know, a full week of working and you're getting like four hundred dollars to build a bookcase where the materials probably cost like three hundred dollars and you're putting this time into sanding it and you know you don't really know what the proper sandpaper is and and you're you're all, you're teaching yourself at the same time so in, in my experience from my trade with woodworking something that you know requires so much machinery and expertise to do things right from picking out the lumber to um, using the right tools and machinery to cut it right and join it. And, and, you know, the same thing with painting, right? I mean, how much are you going to make from one room? I mean, yeah, if you can do it fast and efficiently and it's, it's in the right place. Yeah. But you know, you're working on the side, you're unproven, and it's going to be like some buddy of yours who probably could figure it out himself, but he's, you know, Hey, I'll pay this guy, a little less and he's you know a friend of mine from school and nothing you know wrong with that I'm not criticizing that but you know you don't really have the ability to pick and choose you know where when you go out there full time and you're really putting in the work with advertising and getting your name out there of sooner or later you get like from my experience, it got to the point where it's like, hey, I'm not driving out there to do this gig because I don't, you know, I'm out there full time. And like, why should I take this? That's not profitable when I I can, you know, I've got the time to get work that is going to be profitable. So like I said, so here's my experience and your experience may be different. There's all different trades, all different crafts, but it, for my trade and craft, it, it didn't, it didn't work out after a while. The classes, the side gigs were good and useful for maybe a year, a year and a half, but two years going into three years, it's dragging on, it's not working out. And I even remember uh, one lady who I was, uh, she was a a, a refinisher. I was going out from New York to Connecticut to help her out in her shop. And she told me, she's like, yeah, you you gotta, this isn't going to work out for you after a certain point. You got to you got to take, take, you know, make a jump, you know? And I think even in that gig, like she was getting frustrated. I couldn't be there, you know, all the time or certain weekends I had something going on. So yeah, you know, I hope my information, my experience will be useful to some of you sitting there and you're, you're, you know, you're, you're scared about cutting the cord right away. The, the pressure from friends and family, from, from society, you feel like you, you know, you, you, you can't do it or it's, it's too scary. I hope my information will be useful to some of you. So, uh, that's what I have to say today about side gigs, about classes, my experience. Um, uh, so next week I want to have another podcast. We'll talk about a different topic, which I think might be useful to you. I'm writing my book and it's really great to go over the genesis of how I got into all this. I'm having a really great time doing it. So that's all for today. Um, you all have uh, a great day and, and good luck with your endeavors.